Hi, I'm Regina Aris, the Pilates engineer, owner of Top Gun Pilates Engineering here in uh, New York City, New York. And we provide maintenance, repair, and overhaul services to all manufacturers of Pilates equipment, including Graz equipment, which we'll be working on uh, today. The link to my website is down below on the bottom of the screen. So if you ever have any questions or you feel free to contact us there. Um, and you can also email me at regina at pilatesengineer.com. So when I service a Graz reformer, I start from the foot bar end and work my way all the way to the end where the strap wheels are, and then work from the top to the bottom and from the bottom to the top. So we'll get started over on the foot bar. And when we're looking here, you just want to take a look at the foot bar cover to make sure that it's that the foam underneath isn't kinked or uh, twisted in any way, and that the uh, Velcro that attaches it is uh, secured tightly. And then we'll move on to the what I refer to as the kickstand, the part that holds the foot bar up, is attached with bolts on either side. And you want to make sure that they are tight and. Um, and not loose in any way. If they are loose, you can take some Loctite or thread locker and actually tighten it up. Uh, and I can uh, show you how to do that if you need that. But most of the time, they're perfectly fine. Then we will make sure that the foot bar operates properly by moving it back and forth a few times and lifting it up and back. If there are squeaks or, um, or any weird noises, we'll take our three-in-one oil and a rag and lubricate these points. And I'll go grab my three-in-one oil and a rag. So we have the three-in-one oil and a rag. And we'll take it and lubricate it right by the surface that the kickstand and the foot bar meet. Just one or two drops, very little. And then we'll also take the three-in-one oil and put it right where the foot bar meets the reformer frame. And a drop here, and then on the other side here. And then we'll put our rag and lubricant down and just work the oil in back and forth a few times. And then we'll, kick, we'll keep the foot bar down. The next thing over here is we have our safety straps. So you want to make sure that the hooks that attach the safety straps are tight and straight, and that the safety straps are actually intact and there's very little fraying or anything there, and that the attachment hooks are not worn or broken in any way. You also want to make sure that on each side that they're facing opposite directions. So this hook will go in like this, and then this hook will go out like that on both sides. And then we'll work our way over to the top of the carriage. We'll take our paintbrush and our toothbrush, and you get to straddle the reformer. <laughs> take the handles off and just lay them inside the well of the reformer. And you'll use one of these two tools to get in between the crease of the shoulder block to remove any lint or dust that might be in there. And you'll work your way around the shoulder block base. And you'll lift the headpiece up and make sure that this is clean in here too. And then you'll keep the headpiece down, lift the flap up and get in at the hinge. And you'll do that for both sides. Yep. And when that's done, we can put these away. I'm going to lift the handles up and take a look at them. You want to make sure that the handle is either the leather or the metal handles, that they're in, uh, intact and that the bolts are tight, and that the snap hooks that attach the leather to the handle are in good condition. The snap works and that the uh, swivel part is not worn too much. And once we've done that, we'll take the handles all the way to the end and just rest them on the box that's probably back here. And now that we're back here, we'll take a look at our long spine straps to make sure that they're all new and not frayed. 
and that the snap hooks that are attached to them are also in good working condition. And then we'll just put these back. And now while we're back here, we will lubricate the wheels that attach the straps to the frame. And usually they make a lot of noise. And this lubrication, the three-in-one oil, will make that go away. So the way you lubricate these wheels is you'll take your three-in-one oil and you'll put a drop on either side of the wheel where the bolt is. And right in there. And then spin the wheel a few times to get the lubricant inside the axle. And you'll do that for this wheel over here as well. And we'll spin that. And now that we've worked from the foot bar all the way to the wheels, now we can work the underside of the carriage. So I'm gonna lift it up out of the frame and turn it upside down. We'll take all four springs off, move the carriage away a little, and take the gear bar out. I'm gonna lift the carriage up and into my body and then flip it over on uh, the underside. And then I'll place it gently down so that the metal frame and the metal part of the carriage don't actually touch. And we'll rest it like that over the frame of the reformer and making sure the straps are all out of the way. So now this is what the underside of a reformer carriage looks like. The first thing we wanna do is make sure that the springs are okay. So the way we do that is you'll take a look at them and just visually look to see if you notice anything obvious. And if you don't, then you'll uh, pull on the spring to make sure that all the coils of the spring separate evenly and that there aren't any kinks or um, weird spaces between the coils of the springs. You'll also wanna take a look at, to make sure that the opening of the spring on the spring bracket is facing up when the carriage is upside down. And that means that they're on properly and that they won't fall off when you're using the carriage or moving the carriage. So now that we've looked at the springs and the spring bracket to make sure that it's tight and not moving, now we'll service the wheels of the reformer. We have four big wheels and four little wheels and they require some tools, so I'm gonna go get my wrenches and a few rags. So what we need here is just a drop cloth to make sure that we keep the carriage clean. We need our white lithium grease, a cleaning rag, a half inch uh, socket wrench, a half inch crescent wrench, and our uh, 5 32nd Allen wrench. And I'll start using this first. You'll use your Allen wrench to take the wheels off. And you'll do the same process for each one of the wheels. And the bolt comes out. The wheel comes off. And you have this metal block right here. We'll clean the metal block of any grease or dirt or residue. We'll use the same cleaning rag to clean the bolt and remove any hair or gunk and residue off of it. And we'll also do the same to clean the wheel itself. And once it's all clean, we'll put it all back together. We'll take our white lithium grease, put a drop on the block, We'll put a line on the uh, bolt and get that piece of hair out of the way. And now we'll put everything back together, spinning the bolt as you put it in to make sure that it lubricates evenly. And then you'll put the whole thing back on the block. You'll use your Allen wrench to tighten it up. And these tighten all the way and will actually lock into position and the wheel will still spin. 
and then that's how you service the small wheels. The big wheels are a little different. You'll use the socket wrench and your crescent wrench to remove the nut and the bolt on the big wheel. Make sure it's going in the right direction and we'll loosen. the way. We'll take the nut off, put it on our reg, and I'll take the bolt out and remove the whole wheel and the bolt. We'll take our cleaning rag to clean the housing, the inside and the outside, and get any dust or hair that's in there out. We'll use the same rag to clean the bolt. We'll clean the nut. We'll clean the two washers that are on either side of the wheel. This is what they normally look like. <laughs> and then we'll clean the wheel. Both sides. And I'll use the non-greasy side of my rag just to wipe off any of the residue that might be on the actual wheel itself. And so now that all of that is clean, we'll put it all back together. We'll use the same grease to apply a thin line on the bolts. I put a little drop on each one of the washers and then I stick the washers onto the outside of the wheel. And that little drop doesn't really do much other than glue the washers to the wheel so that I don't have to fight with them when I put the wheel back in. And I'll take my bolt and put the wheel back in, twisting it as I put it in also. Oops, I think I lost my washer. I guess my glue didn't work. There we go. And now we put the nut back on. and we'll tighten it back up. So the difference between these wheels and these uh, side wheels is that you can over tighten this to the point where the wheel won't spin anymore. And I'm gonna do that just so you can see what it, what it does. You see how the wheel doesn't spin? And so you wanna make sure that it's loose enough so that the wheel doesn't move side to side, but spins freely when you rotate it. And then once, that on, once that's on, I'll take my cleaning rag, or my grease rag, and just clean the outside up to make sure that there isn't any excess um, grease on the nut or on the bolt. Because that excess grease actually attracts hair and dirt and uh, grime, and that's actually not what you want. So you wanna make sure that it's clean. And so now you would do the same thing for each one of the wheels on the carriage. And then once that's finished, we flip the carriage, uh, we'll move the carriage over so that we can clean the tracks. And I'm just gonna clean this up and grab the tools that I need to clean the tracks. You'll want a separate rag. You don't wanna use your greasy rag to clean the tracks on your uh, reformer. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way a little. Oh, 
move the straps out of the way. And then so if you look at the track, and usually you'll find that there's uh, like black marks on your track, and I call them track boogers because they get stuck and they look unpleasant and they make your wheels ride unevenly. And so you'll use either the all natural cleaning wipes, uh, which the texture of the wipe is actually quite nice because it provides a little bit of traction to get those uh, stubborn uh, marks off the tracks. Or if you don't have these, even though they're available on my website for purchase, you can use an alcohol-free uh, all-purpose cleaning spray. And I prefer method all-purpose. One, I like the smell because it's lavender. And two, it is very, very good. It's a great cleaner. So. I will use my wipes. If you have dust on the tracks, um, you can always wipe it off with uh, the paintbrush first to get rid of some of the dust before you start cleaning. So we'll use the wipe. And we can use one at a time or you can double it up to two. And you'll just take the wipe and you will clean the track, getting into the surface of the track and the frame. And these wipes you can use on anything, the upholstery, metal, wood. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using them on leather just because leather requires special care. But you can use them on everything and they clean quite nicely. And so you'll clean the tracks front to back and make sure that they're all nice and clean. And once that's finished, you can also wipe out your hands because they will get dirty. And now we'll flip the carriage back over so that we can check the leather straps and make sure they're the proper length. So I'm going to flip the carriage over exactly the same way that I flipped it in the first place. So I'm going to lift up the end towards me, bring it into my body, step out of the frame, and place it back on the tracks, nice and smoothly. And you want to clear the straps out. Good. Put the spring bar back in. And put all four springs on. I'll walk to the end and grab the handles. Make sure there's nothing in the way. And now straddle the reformer and test the length. So we want to make sure that the leather is at the same position on its wheels down at the end. So I'll lean over and just make sure that they're on the inside. And then pull on the leather to get them tight. The recommended length of the leather is about one inch past the shoulder block when it's tight like this. So you can see that this, excuse me, this strap is quite long. So the way that you would adjust that is underneath the reformer. And the easiest way to do that is with a screwdriver and a crescent wrench. The old style uh, straps use 7 16 crescent wrenches, or 7 16 and the new style uh, use nuts that require a half inch wrench. So depending on how old your reformer is, you, would like, you should have both of those wrenches just to make sure, especially if you've purchased an old reformer and need to put new straps on it, you'll need both. So we'll adjust this strap by going underneath the reformer and uh, testing that one out. I'm actually going to adjust the back one. And the easiest way to do that is to take a screwdriver and your wrench and it's right underneath here. So we'll adjust the leather straps to make sure that they're, they're the right length by adjusting the length of this eye bolt underneath the uh, reformer carriage. And to do that, you'll need your screwdriver and a wrench. 
In order to make the strap shorter, we want to move the eye of the bolt closer to the bracket right here. And we'll do that by loosening up the eye bolt. So that was quite easy to loosen. And you'll move the nut close to the eye bolt. It does not have to come all the way. You'll adjust it as much as you need so that the strap becomes the proper length. And then you'll move the eye bolt in, and then there's a nut on the underside, which you're not gonna be able to see, that you'll tighten all the way up against that bracket. And then you'll tighten it up. And that's how you'll adjust the strap. And then, You'll make sure that it's even. And now we'll test the length of both of them. You'll pull the leather on the inside of the wheels and then make sure that it's tight, just like that. And bring them all the way through the center of the shoulder blocks. You wanna make sure that they're not twisted or anything. And then you'll check the handle. So you wanna line up the wood part of the handle and make sure that it makes a straight line. And then that's how you'll know that the straps are even. You can give them a little bit of a wiggle too to make sure that they're not caught on anything. And then once those line up, you know that your straps are even. And then so since we've, uh, Check the straps, we'll lift the headpiece up, put the handles back on their eye bolts, and that's how you service a Graz reformer. Thanks. <laughs>